Shalom and welcome to our study of the quarters. We started this five videos back, four videos back, with the word kanaf, uh, the plural form kanofit, uh, translated as quarters. We had the commandment uh, in uh, the book of Bible Bar Numbers uh, that you were to have seat seat. Uh, or fringes tied to the kenopha, to the quarters of your garments. We saw the prophecy in Zechariah chapter 8, verse 23, that in the last days, two men from the nations would come and grab hold of the kenopha, the quarters of the garments of the Jewish men. And we've uh, taken quite a few paths. We've even seen other words that were synonymous with the quarters, and we could expand that further. Maybe at a later time we'll do it, or hopefully you'll, you'll go and exhibit it. But today we want to take... Uh, another aspect, uh, another way that the word kanaf is is used, and uh, it's going to bring an interesting twist in here. It's going to be where kanaf is translated as wings, like the wings of a bird. Now, I'd like to go first uh, back to the Torah, to the book of Exodus, and we're going to go to chapter uh Chapter 25, this is where Hashem is given to Moshe the command to build the Mishkan. And so we're going to look at verse 17. I'm reading from an interliterary translation, so it's not going to be quite as smooth as if we were reading from just a translation. But uh, we're able to see the Hebrew at the same time. It says, you shall make a copperette, a cover. This is for the ark, okay? A copperette of gold that is pure, uh, that is pure, two cubits and a half its length, and a cubit and a half its width, uh, you shall make two caravim, a caruv. Now, you, you might know it by the word cherub, C-H-E-R-U-B, cherub, uh, the kind of little pudgy things with little wings and everything, not exactly what's described in the scripture. A caruv, K-R-U-V, or K-E-R-U-V, uh, are going to be these angels, now, the caravim are going to be placed on top of the copper ramp. That's what this is about. They're going to be placed onto uh, the parochet. You might remember that a caruv was put at God and did the garden of Eden to guard that man not enter back into the, the garden. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 1, chapter 3, chapter 18, we have uh, what are called the, the four hayot, the, uh, the four living beings. These are are uh, going to be caravid. They're going to be the uh, uh, these type of angels. Book of Revelation, uh, chapter 4, as well as other chapters, has exactly the same thing. So we have the two caravim of gold hammered out, and you shall make them, you shall make them uh, from the one side, from the, the two ends of the copperette. Uh, you shall make one crew from the uh, from the end at this side, and one crew from the end of that side, uh, from the cover, uh, or from the copperette. You shall make the caravim on both its ends. Now, verse 20, this is the key verse. It says, the caravim shall be with spread wings. And the word is kind of feed. Okay, so it's the, the masculine form here. Throughout the scriptures, we have where a lot of prophecies about eagle, eagles and being born on the eagle's wings and so forth. The word there is going to be uh, the uh, either the uh, the kind of feed, uh, or the kind of foot, uh, kind of it, the, uh, the either the, the masculine form or the plural form. Now, I want to go to a passage, a prophecy that we have in the New Testament, and uh, this is going to be chapter... Uh, 23, verse 17. Of course, we're right before the, the big Olivet Discourse where Yeshua goes on the Mount of Olives and he prophesies about the end times. Verse 17, O Yerushalayim, Yerushalayim, the one who kills the prophets and stones those who are sent to her, how often I wanted to gather you, your children together, as a hen gathers her chicks under her wings. Kenofit, okay? So, uh, but you were not willing. And then uh, it, it goes far from there. Okay, so now we're going to look at a, also in the book of Matthew, and this is going to be uh, in chapter uh, chapter 9. And uh, we also have in Mark 8, and then also uh, Mark 8, verse 25, Luke 8, verse 43. 
uh, we have where uh, Yeshua uh, is, uh, it's very interesting because in all three of the Gospels where it gives a story, it gives the same sequence of events. And just before this, uh, we have where a girl was restored to life uh, and a woman healed. And then it's immediately followed by this woman that approaches to him. So it says, verse 19, so Yeshua rose and followed him, and so did his Talmudim, or his disciples, his students. Suddenly, a woman who had a flow of blood for 12 years uh, from, uh, came from behind and touched the hem of his garment. Okay, now we know that on the hem of the garment, uh, this the, many times that the Kenophan are translated as hem. Okay, so we know that, what did she do? She came up and she grabbed hold of the quarters. And of course, in grabbing the quarters, she grabbed hold of the seat seat. And so, uh, I want to read about this woman out of the Mishnah. Uh, she has a flow of blood for 12 years. This is going to be outside her menstrual cycle. And so we're told in the Tractate Kelim of the Mishnah, chapter 1, uh, in, ver, uh, in Mishnah 6, it starts talking about the 10 levels of sanctification, of Kedusha. So in one eight, it says within the walls, meaning within the walls of Jerusalem, uh, is more sanctified than this, than outside of Jerusalem. For we may eat there Kodeshim Kalim, second degree sacrifices, and Maser Shadi, second time. Har Habayat, the Temple Mount is more sanctified than this for Zavim. Now, Zavim are going to be men that have a genital discharge. Zavot are going to be women that have an issue of blood outside of their menstrual cycle. That's this woman. Uh, Nidot, a woman in her menstrual cycle, and Yodot, a woman that has an, uh, a, uh, a discharge due to childbirth, may not enter there. Now, I'm not going to read the rest of the the Mishnah, but you can see immediately that this woman for 12 years has not even been able to go to the Temple Mount. Her social life is destroyed. Uh, she is, because of her impurity from the flow of blood, because the nephesh, the life, uh, or the soul is in the blood, Leviticus chapter 17. And so uh, we're told suddenly a woman who had a flow of blood for 12 years came from behind and touched the hem of his garment, or touched the kadofit, grabbed the seat seat, for she said to herself, if only I may touch his garment, I shall be made well. But Yeshua turned around, and when he saw her, he said, be of good cheer, daughter. Your faith, your imadah, your confidence has made you well. And the woman was made well from that hour. Now, when Yeshua came into the ruler's house, and it goes on, uh, from there. Now, in the other Gospels, the, the, the Luke passage and the, the Mark passage, let me turn over to Mark. We have a, one little piece of information that was given with that. And so I'm going to go to chapter 8. And uh, I believe we have, uh, let's see, chapter 8, verse 25, I believe. Uh, Nope, let me try chapter 5, verse 25. And, uh, yeah, uh, it's 525. So Yeshua went with him, and a great multitude followed him and thronged him. Now a certain woman who had a flow of blood for 12 years and had suffered many things from many physicians. She had spent all that she had and was no better but rather grew worse. So we're given some additional information. Now, uh, very interestingly, we have in the Mishnah, it goes into uh, a woman that is married that has an issue of blood that is continuous that her husband uh, can, uh, can literally divorce her. Uh, it is not a matter of that he's not taking care of her. It has to deal with matters of purity and so forth. And so... Uh, she she doesn't have her dowry. Uh, she all of her her income has been spent on this. Now we want to go. There is a prophecy of this back in the Tanakh, and so I want to go to the book of Malachi, 
And in Malachi, we have, uh, there are only three chapters in the Hebrew. There are four chapters in the the English. Uh, if you're looking at a Hebrew Tanakh, uh, this is going to be chapter 3 and uh, verse 20. If you're looking at a non-Jewish publication, it's going to be Malachi chapter 4 and verse 2. It says, but to you who fear by day, the son of righteousness shall arise with healing in its wings. Now, when you read that in the non-Jewish publication, it is going to say in his wings, okay? It personalizes it, but here it's in its wings. So I did some research on this because I want to, to define, because in his wings, you would see definitely as a messianic prophecy, but uh, I think it's better uh, and that in Hebrew would be more accurate to say in its wings, okay? The stone to knock translates uh, translate this as in its rays, okay? It takes the word kenofit, and literally it's going to be the word kenofit. Uh, let, me, let me read this for us. Uh, and so uh, we have, uh, find the place, uh, we have, uh, and you shall tread, let's see, let me get where it starts. But to you who fear my name, uh, and if you fear my name, the son, Shemesh of righteousness, Zedekiah, uh, and then we have, uh, the word is uh, Kedifaha, okay? So you hear the word Kedaf in there, Kedifaha, okay? So when you stop to think about it, you have that the sun in the sky, literally the sun in the sky, it brings uh, it brings health, it brings righteousness, it brings uh, to uh, to the plants. Without sunlight, they die. Whenever you have someone that is sick, what do you do? You raise the windows, and you have the sun come forth uh, into the room, and it brings that that health. But we have here. When we read all of it, it does give a messianic twist to it. It says, but to you who fear my name, the son of righteousness shall rise with healing in its wings, and you shall go out and leap like calves for the stall. You shall tread down the wicked, for they shall be ashes under the soles of your feet on the day that I do this, says the Lord of hosts. So basically what we have is that in this word kadaf, we have a prophecy that can be seen as physically the sun in the sky bringing forth, uh, bringing forth health to the earth, but it can also be translated and understood as a reference to the Messiah. Now, when we put this with the woman that has the issue of blood for th- for twelve years, where she grabs hold of the seat seat, and Yeshua says, "Power has gone out from me, healing." Her faith has made her whole. I think it's a tremendous prophecy. And again, we see the significance, not only of the tzitzit, but of the corners of the garments. Shalom. Shalom, everyone. We have had a really great response. We thank you for uh, for the videos we put up on the corners of the Kenofit. Uh We've had a number of questions that have come in. In order to answer those questions, we're planning on doing a live stream broadcast uh, where we'll take the questions and and uh, I'll try to answer them as best I can. We'll possibly have some other uh, new areas that we did discuss in the videos uh, that we can uh, briefly explore. Uh, if you would, if you have any questions, uh, write them down in the comment section after this video and uh, we'll have those available. One more thing that I would like to ask you to uh, to do is to subscribe to our channel. And be sure when you subscribe to click the notification. And we always, always appreciate a like and a share. Thank you.